one of the great challenges of dealing with this environmental question in our day is if you really have compassion for the whole planet. Folks are saying, you've got to do all these things. And very often there's a misguided compassion that really is a kind of oppression. Um, for the poor, I've begun to realize as we've looked at and talked about things like, is there such a thing as environmental justice? A lot of people are talking about the poor in urban areas have factories near them and they get hit by an unclean environment. And that's a problem we have to face in America and in other places around the world. Very often we forget that there's another dimension to this issue of how the poor are impacted by our environmental policies. Imagine if we were living somewhere in a third world nation and suddenly the cost of gasoline goes up dramatically and we're dealing with a kind of rural poverty. We need gasoline to run the farm equipment and to get from a rural area into town. All of a sudden our total lifestyle is changed and impacted. That also comes back domestically. Very often the rural poor in America, Appalachian poor, have a very fixed income and things like running the tractor and the truck and doing the, all the chores are also a part of this equation where there is an incredible regressive tax that affects them more than the rest of the people. I think you get the picture that this is a tremendously important area that by and large is just being said, oh yeah, 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 they'll get a tax credit or yeah, 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 we'll figure something else out. But really, uh, the whole concept has really not been thought through well as far as its moral impact on people who are at the borderline or just above the poverty level. To learn more, visit www.resistingthegreendragon.com and order the complete conference.